Welcome back to the Atari ST Nostalgia GFA Basic Tour. Now in the previous set of videos we explored lots of basic commands and we ended up building a nice demo out of them. And I actually had a lot of fun creating those videos and I intend to add some new ones in the near future. Uh, but before I continue in this series I want to correct an error I made in one of the previous videos concerning part 8 about random numbers. Now the mistake I made did not make a very big difference to the way I used it to draw like random dots, boxes and circles and so. But I still feel I really need to correct this problem. Um, so yeah, I can show you what I mean and then I will show you the correct way of using the command. Um, so let's go into the, into the editor. And I will create some, some uh, simple code. Um, let's say... I will create a loop until I press the spacebar. I will make a number x equals random... Three, I will well, and I will print the X in the middle of the screen. Now this print add command is, is one of the things I will actually explain in the future video when I will exp uh, elaborate more on the print command. For now it's just so it's in the middle of the screen. Uh, uh, hang on, I will, that's not correct. So I, I will slow it down a little bit and then I will loop and So basically this is a very simple piece of code uh, which basically says until I press the space bar uh, at some point it will create a random number x, it will print it at the middle of the screen like column 40 and line number 12. Uh, I will pause for one tenth of a second and it will go into the loop uh, unless I press the space bar and then I will wait uh, um, to end the program until I press a key so we can still see the number. Now in my previous video I explained this random 3 as it will pick a number starting at 0 and uh, it will be between 0 and 3 including the 3. And uh, that is actually not correct. Uh, I will just test the code. Uh, let's run it. Because as you can see it's outputting lots of random numbers but it's either a 0, a 1 or a 2. And it never picked a 3. And of course it could be a coincidence but the longer it takes the, the less chance of not getting a 3. And you can see it just never picks the three. Um, so I explained this command wrong to you. Um, what this actually means is, see, I end the program. This command, x equals random three, it means I will pick a random out of three numbers and I will start counting at zero. So in this case, it means I will pick either zero, one, or three. It doesn't actually pick the number uh, that's displayed here. Um, and of course, if you're drawing dots uh, on the scale of 1 uh, to 640, uh, the, the, the effect is not really visible. But if you wanted to, uh, for instance, make a game that rolls a dice and you want to pick a random uh, out of 6, then, then it does make a difference. Because, because uh, in this way, it will actually never pick your 6. Uh, so if I do 1 plus random 3, uh, this actually means I will start at 1. It will always be 1 plus either 0, 1 or 2. And now it will pick like one, two, or three. And I explained this wrong in the previous video, for which I do apologize. Uh, so if I wanted to roll a dice uh, and say, well, it should be somewhere between one and six, I would actually say one plus random six and not one plus random five. So the highest number is actually the number I put here. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor. This is my lowest number that I get, and the highest number is actually this number plus this number minus 1. So now I should actually get a 6, but never a 7, and we can test it. And as you can see, there's no 7, but there is a 6 sometimes in there. Um, so concerning my dots, it didn't really make it a lot of difference. Um, yeah, instead of 20 pixels at the edge of the screen, uh, like I thought I programmed it, it would probably be 19 pixels or 21, depending on how I uh, did it wrong. Um, but yeah, this was just a small, very short video to correct this for you. Um, I hope you can forgive me my mistake. Uh, I'm also doing lots of this from memory I had, and um, I'm doing it part from rediscovering, from trying, and I actually found out, okay, I got this one wrong. So I hope it's corrected now, and I hope you can also apply it into your code correctly. And that's really all I have to say in this video. It's just a short, uh, yeah, short error correction. I hope you enjoyed watching it anyways, and I will see you at the next one when I continue this series 
and then we will talk about more fancy printing commands. See you then.